I still can't believe this movie even happened. Like, thinking back on the backstory of everything that happened to James Gunn, which I will get to in just a second, but knowing that uh, this was the movie that changed everything for DC was is pretty fascinating. So either way, I finally watched uh, on this DCEU marathon, The Suicide Squad. To wrap it up in one sentence, this is the movie that got James Gunn the gig to run DC. I mean, this has to be good, right? The entire reason why James Gunn was at DC in the first place is, I feel like I have to recap it because, you know, we're gonna, this video is it's essentially gonna be a relic to time if this channel is still up, which I'm gonna bet it is. And just, I need to talk about it just a little bit. Right before Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 was going to start filming, uh, James Gunn was very suddenly fired from Marvel and Disney as a whole, pretty much. Uh, he, a lot of right-winger idiots decided to resurface some old tweets of his, and, and apparently that scared Disney enough to fire him. It eventually got revealed that James Gunn, very recently, that James Gunn uh, was essentially consulting with Kevin Feige on a lot of Marvel movies around 2016 or 2017. Well, two of those that I can remember off the top of my head were the first Doctor Strange movie and Spider-Man Homecoming. And I do think those are great. And who, who, I don't know how much James Gunn was involved with those movies. He's not credited on them, so I don't think it's too much. But knowing that he has had some influence on Marvel outside of Guardians of the Galaxy was very interesting to learn. And that proves why firing him was such a massive mistake. The cast of Guardians of the Galaxy rallied to him and essentially said, we're not going to come back if you don't rehire him, essentially. Luckily, that all got sorted out, but not before uh, Warner Brothers got James Gunn to do a new Suicide Squad movie. That ended up releasing a couple years before Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, so about two years ago now. And he, at that time, he also made the spin-off series from this movie, Peacemaker. I didn't watch Peacemaker, but I did like it when I first watched it. I didn't get the chance to re-watch it for this. And yeah, this movie, I mean, granted, this came out during the time when HBO Max was putting out all of the theatrical Warner Brothers movies. So, this did awful at the box office because of that. It, I think on like an almost two hundred million dollar budget, it made like a hundred sixty million, but that didn't phase Warner Brothers because then right after that, James not right after that, but maybe a li like a little over a year later, James Gunn got hired to run DC. So this movie better be good, and I think that this movie's pretty fucking great. The story is pretty different from the twenty sixteen Suicide Squad, and it pretty much skips the entire setup that the first movie had of what the Suicide Squad was, who was running it, what exactly Task Force X is, and I like that a lot, because a lot of people saw the first Suicide Squad, they didn't need that run through again. Basically, these group of villains are sent to an island called Corto Maltese to take down something called Project Starfish. Easy as that. But there's, so, there's a lot more to this story, which I'm not going to spoil. I'm still not a fan of spoiling movies like this, even if they're a couple of years old, so I'm, that's all I'm going to say. I think the action in this is really well done. I feel like this was the stepping off point where James Gunn had really started to grow in his action sequences, especially in his like hand-to-hand -hand combats, especially the Harley Quinn breakout scene. Just absolutely spectacular scene. But pretty much all of the action is just great in this. There is a great sense of James Gunn knowing what he's doing with the with these characters and the story and just overall being good at what he does. I think the acting for the most part is pretty good here too. The returning actors here are pretty good like Margot Robbie and Viola Davis. I mean come on who, who are you who like they were gonna be good come on. But somehow, mo again, most improved character in this is Rick Flagg, the generic military guy from the first movie, played by Joel Kinnaman. He's brought into this movie and actually has a personality and is given a pretty good story. I also like Idris Elba as Bloodsport. It's very hard not to like Idris Elba, in my opinion, because I just think he's that good of an actor. And I like him as this 
sort of lead of the movie. What I think, where where I think this movie succeeds, where the where the twenty sixteen version doesn't, is that there is a focus on one character, and that character, for the most part, is Bloodsport. And we we shift focus every now and then to Harley, but it is mainly just Bloodsport that we're focusing on, and I really like that choice. I think John Cena's great in this as Peacemaker. I think this is pretty much his best role to date in his acting career, although that might also have to do with how much he got a boost from Peacemaker and how well he did in that, but I also think he did a great job in this. And forgive me if I mispronounce his name, but Daniela Melchior, Melchior, I think that's how you say her name, uh, playing Ratcatcher 2, I think she's the heart of this movie, and that bus conversation with her and Bloodsport is one of my, just one of my favorite scenes in this whole movie in general, which is Honestly, pretty surprising to me on, on a rewatch. Surprisingly, I actually think the humor in this is the weakest part of this movie. There are a couple of things that I laughed at, but and maybe a chuckle, but nothing that had me like like head over heels laughing like anything in the Guardians movies. But the humor isn't bad in this. I just feel like it took a backseat in this one. I also do have to mention the visual effects in this because I really do think that this is some of the best stuff in a comic book movie recently. Uh, up there with James Gunn's own Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Mainly because it's just so much leaps and bounds ahead of most of the other DCEU movies. It's, it's kind of funny, honestly. And it's also really gory. It all, it, I, to me at least, it harkens back to James Gunn's older days where he was making much more uh, mature movies and they were much more violent and bloody, like super. I, th I think that's a good example, and I feel like this just felt like the violence from that movie brought onto a massive budget, and it just translated really well to me. Yeah, I don't have much else to say about The Suicide Squad. This is the opposite of the 2016 one in it actually being a coherent and, like, well-made movie. <laughs> like, that, like, 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 if you saw my thoughts on the 2016 Suicide Squad, You'll know how much I hated that one. So, I feel like it's worth noting that this is actually a coherent movie. Like with most James Gunn movies, I feel like this is incredibly heartfelt, but it's also backed up with unrelenting violence and gore, and genuinely disturbing moments too throughout this that I kind of forgot about when I first saw it. So it was nice to see some see a comic book movie just not hold back when it comes to... Well, not hold back in general actually, because they are just doing their own, like, it's doing its own thing, didn't have to be connected to the DCEU as a whole, and now, because James Gunn is running the DCU, I think, or DC Studios now, I think that's what it is, I feel like elements of this are going to carry over, mainly Harley Quinn, but that's just me, and I think, and I do like Margot Robbie as Harley, as I've said in my Birds of Prey video, so, yeah. I'm perfectly fine with it. The Suicide Squad is an easy 9 out of 10 for me. Just, this has everything I'd want in a comic book movie, and it's also just done well. It's very much a taste thing, and it's a personal thing, but I don't know. I fuck with it. My question now for you is, which Suicide Squad movie do you prefer? That is, a con I guess it's a contested debate. I think it's easy. It's very easy in my mind. But I, I like to hear the other sides of arguments. I want to know what you think about it. So what's your fa which Suicide Squad movie do you prefer? Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video. See ya.